Last week we talked about why Hulk's pants are purple and also which Marvel characters belong to which movie studios. It was all kind of confusing, but let's see what you guys had to say. So I'm going to be doing something a little bit different in this video. I'm going to be taking some comments from Twitter this time around instead of just solely the YouTube comments. And we're going to actually start with Daniel Martinez who asks, okay, yeah, sure, Hulk's pants are purple and all, but why don't they rip like the rest of his clothes? Obviously, the out of continuity reason is, like I said in the video, Marvel didn't want to sell a giant green naked monster book to children and also the CCA probably wouldn't have allowed for that either. But Daniel here is asking for the income continuity reason for why Hulk's pants don't rip and this actually comes from Stan Lee himself who in an interview said that he had always assumed Hulk was friends with uh, Reed Richards aka Mr. Fantastic who helped develop a very stretchy purple fabric uh, that wouldn't rip when he turned into Hulk. This is also kind of echoed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you remember in Age of Ultron, he has these kind of very specialized stretchy pants that don't rip. It wasn't drawn too much attention to here, uh, but it's kind of assumed that Tony Stark, when he was designing all the costumes for the rest of the team, also designed some pants for Hulk so that, you know, Got, they could stretch out, got some room. So I guess the life lesson in all of this is that if your superpower involves you growing to gigantic sizes, probably acquaint yourself with some sort of genius fabricator. Moving right along, we actually have a couple comments from Dan King and Luciano Martinez, who both are colorblind and had no idea that Hulk's pants were purple, and that is just fascinating to me. I mean, I'm sitting here super naive, assuming that everyone knows that Hulk's pants are purple, and I didn't even think about how colorblind people see Hulk. Of course, you know, growing up as a kid in a comic book culture, my dad was a huge comic book fan himself. I just assume, you know, I, I automatically associate Hulk with purple pants, period. But it's super interesting to get uh, other perspectives on it, because I just never, it never crossed my mind. I believe they both said that they thought uh, his pants were blue, and I'm wondering if that's just a condition of their colorblindness, or if it's just like kind of a basic pants color, because we see jeans everywhere. But this kind of also ruins the uh, villain quality that Hulk has a little bit. As I said in the video, the uh, purple pants helped him stand out visually as a villain in comic books, uh, but with them being blue, or at least just not purple. I don't know, maybe a different perspective there. Then we had a great comment thread from Mumbles the Pyro, Ron Peterson and Sarah Fry, who were all talking about Hulk's relation to the Frankenstein monster. If you recall, we talked about how the Frankenstein monster was one of the inspirations that Stanley and Jack Kirby had when they were creating the Hulk. Uh, and in this comment thread, people were talking about how, well, it kind of mirrors uh, Hulk Hulk's color change as well. Because uh, if you remember, Hulk was originally gray, then changed to green. And they were saying that, well, Frankenstein monster was also originally gray and then changed to, we kind of, perceive him as green now is the kind of cultural norm for the Frankenstein monster. But it turns out, and I had, I had no idea that this was the case, uh, Frankenstein's monster was only gray because they, they filmed it in black and white, the old movie in black and white. Originally in the text, uh, he's actually yellow because of, you know, him being dead and with embalming fluids and whatnot. So that just goes to show you that if you dive into the comment section of a NerdSync video, you're gonna find out more information about things that you didn't think that you wanted to know about, but find really cool. So I'm gonna give you guys this week's Nerd Sync No Prize and guess what? Boom! They're real now. Peaked the audio, I bet. I actually had a couple of these printed just for fun. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to actually send you guys the Nerd Sync No Prizes. Uh, not yet anyway. Logistically, we're trying to work that out. But if you ever see me at like a local comic book con or something here in Texas, or I'm always traveling all over the place, come say hi. Snag one of these bad boys. I was. I hesitated because I didn't want to assign a gender to the thing, but it's too late. They're boys, I guess. I don't know. That's just another example of me overthinking everything. All right, moving right along and continuing with the theme of Hulk's skin color, we have a comment from the Panda Supreme who said, wait, wasn't Hulk turned green because of an accident, not a purposeful decision? A couple people on this thread seem to agree with this, but I can't find anything of the sort, any credible source that says that this is exactly what happened. The closest that I can find is the story that I told in the video, which is that they were originally thrown around the idea of green, but then they ended up going with gray. They found that the gray color was very inconsistent. So then they were like, yeah, okay, let's just go with green then. However, there is a bit of truth to this in insofar as uh, the gray 
gray color being as inconsistent as it was came across as green for a couple panels. So in that regard, yes, making Hulk green there was an accident, but only because of how inconsistent the gray was. He also came across the bluish color in a couple panels, but I mean, you know. In terms of this story, I'm not really willing to go as far as to say that the green was an accident. Like they saw it come out being printed as green and going, yeah, you know what? Let's stick with green. That doesn't seem like the actual story. It seems more like they thought about making him green, went with gray, saw that he accidentally came out as green in a couple panels. But again, doesn't really matter because he also came out as blue in a couple panels. And then when they just saw the inconsistency of the gray color, they were like, you know what? Let's go revisit this idea that we had earlier about about making him green. And that's kind of the way that the colorist of the issue, Stan Goldberg, talks about it, so I'm willing to say that that's probably what happened. Now lastly on this video, I want to address something that has been happening a lot here at NerdSync, which is that I spoiled something. Kevin Cruz and a couple other people called me out on spoiling um, a part of Civil War II, the current comic book story that's going on right now, and so I want to tell you some of my thoughts on it, but uh, just rest assured, I'm not going to talk about anything specific. There will not be spoilers right now in this video for Civil War II. So when I was writing that part of the script, I had to make the conscious decision of whether I thought it was worth putting a spoiler warning at the very beginning of that video. And ultimately, you know, I talked it around uh, uh, with a couple other people at NerdSync and we decided it's such a small part of not only the Civil War II story, but also the video itself that we were doing that we felt it's probably not super necessary to put a spoiler warning in it. So that's kind of the, we picked our path right there. Because ultimately we decided that, uh, yeah, I may spoil that one moment, but I'm not talking about any of the specifics, any of the juicy details that make it so interesting and cool. All of that stuff I did not uh, say. I left that all on the table for all of you readers who haven't reached that point yet, uh, so that you can read that and see that there's much more, much more uh, than what I spoiled. And if I can throw in my own personal opinion here, I'm the kind of person that doesn't put too much weight into spoilers. If you sat me down and told me all of the spoilers for all of the movies and TV shows and comics, I would say, awesome. Because for me, it's less of what happens and more of, you know, the journey to get to these great spoilerific moments. So if I was watching Star Wars and you had told me before I started that Darth Vader is Luke's father, I would say, what? No, of course, that's ridiculous. And you even showed me proof, like, look, here's the thing. And I'd be like, wait, what? Well then how did we get from there to what? And I'd still enjoy watching the movie regardless. But I know that's just my own perspective of it all and I should try to be considerate of other people's perspectives on spoilers. Some people put a ton of weight into them, uh, which, you know, just as a warning from here on out, there might be the occasional spoiler of a movie, comic book, or TV show if you're not caught up on those universes. So apologies, it could come from left field at any moment, you've been warned. But if it's something that's super duper spoilery and super duper important, I'm gonna try to put a spoiler warning there for it, or at least leave out a ton of detail uh, so that you can still experience that yourself. Are we good? Did I make my case? All right, hopefully we don't have to do this again. Let's now move on to the Super Suits video about which Marvel characters belong to which movie studios. So actually all these comments are gonna come from Twitter because we had a great discussion about it yesterday. It all started when the Greatest King AFG asked, well, why does Fox own Deadpool? I mean, look, Deadpool's not a mutant. He doesn't really belong to the X-Men. He's been a part of other teams and interacted with other characters, even Spider-Man, for example. Why does Fox own Deadpool? And this started an amazing conversation about the more uh, technical side of how these deals went down. And I brought up something on Twitter that I think needs more attention and needs to be more common knowledge than it currently is. And that is, it doesn't matter where a character gets their start. So for example, I've heard a lot of people say that if a character premieres in a Fantastic Four comic and Fox owns Fantastic Four, then Fox owns that character because that's where the character first premiered. That is simply not true. I don't know where that all started, but look at characters like Ronan the Accuser, AKA the big bad from Guardians of the Galaxy. He got his start in a Fantastic Four comic, but nope, Marvel Studios used him. And there are a bunch of other examples of this happening, but I think the important thing we need to keep in mind is that when the deals were made, they weren't just like, 
all right, I'll take all of the X-Men and X-Men related characters, and then I will take all of the Fantastic Four and Fantastic Four related characters. Whoever those may be, you will sort it out later. Joel actually chimed in and uh, explained that there were actually huge manifests of very specific characters. There wasn't a lot of wiggle room, not a lot of gray room. It wasn't just like, yeah, we'll take Spider-Man and Spider-Man characters. Whatever that means, we'll take them. They're ours now. Deal with it. Just to make it cleaner and clearer for everyone involved, it was absolutely just lists upon lists of characters and not just like a vague Spider-Man characters. Anyway, I hope that clears more of that up. And also thanks for you guys who are getting involved over on Twitter. Twitter is actually my preferred platform other than right here on YouTube. So if you're not following me or the NerdSync account over there, go do so. Links are in the description as always. And you know what else is in the description? The videos that we talked about today and all of the comments are also in the description if you want to go and add on your thoughts there as well. But I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smart through comics. I will see you on Wednesday for another episode of Comic Misconceptions. See ya.